What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today we're back with another installment of Secrets of Beat Making! <laughs> What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today, we're back with the Secrets of Beat Making series and um First, I just want to go ahead and mention if you guys haven't picked them up already, $9.99 Studio One Tutorials. Pass by and get yourself a copy of Lit. It is five mastering presets um, that are using only Studio One plugins. So if you don't have um, a mastering suite like Ozone or something of that nature and you're looking to get your tracks to commercial volume, this is a quick, easy, and cheap way. Save yourself the money. Um, and stay tuned towards the end of the video um, for an offer that I'm going to be extending to um, um, not producers, but vocalists who want to uh, take over the world. But um, anyway, what what this video is about, this video is about sound selection, which is <clears throat> pretty much one of the most slept on skills, if not the most slept on skills when it comes to production. And um I get a lot of questions on it and I don't um I really made a video about it or 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 talk about it much because I feel like I feel like you guys aren't going to want to hear the answer. Um the answer to how to learn to get better at sound selection is you have to listen. Yeah, you got to listen. You got to take notes. You have to sit down at, you know, at your workstation or in your car and you have to you have to analyze music um the way that the way that i for example got good at sound selection was i knew um like when i started producing when i started producing um trap you know because i used to i i used to make you know back in back in the late 90s and the early 2000s i used to make wu-tang beats on mpc right so and then I and then I wanted to get into trap because um, I just I like the drums better. Um, I found that I found that it was like I was it was more fun for me to make that type of music. But I was having a problem um, with you know how to you know what sounds to use. You know I didn't I didn't know nothing about uh, about a Nexus or a um, or a Dune or, or or the type of VSTs that that people were using. Like I didn't know nothing about that. My production setup was. Um, a rolling sound module and then just samples i would find you know and then when i moved over to um you know to do stuff on the computer it was just a completely different world so it's like i had to relearn um production and the way that i got good at it was i listened to songs and i'm like all right what are the um just the constant um the constant um sounds that always show up in these songs so <clears throat> that was back that was back uh you know like 2008 2009 and you know you listen to you listen to those songs and it was always okay we got there's always some type of big brass stack or there's always some type of string stack and then there's and then there's always some type of arp going on in the hook you know and you know i make my notes and then from that point on i, I know okay you know if i if i want to exist in this genre i gotta do i gotta do brass i gotta do i gotta do an arp um or, or some type of piano and i gotta do um or i gotta do strings <clears throat> And and then the another thing that was confusing me was where where was the bass coming from? It was like holy shit, the eight oh eight is the bass line. Because before when you would use an eight oh eight, it would just be a single note. It didn't have as long as a release. You know, I'm sitting here thinking it's an actual sub bass, and no, they're using eight oh eight samples, which gives it, you know, uh, its its definitive um, uh, sound and tone and direction. So the the point is um once i once i had an understanding of that it was like oh, okay well now i can start to change this and, and do my own thing so instead of instead of a horn um 
you know, just knowing how synths work, you know, and, and, and brasses or, or program saw leads, maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I'll use some saw leads, you know what I'm saying? Instead of, instead of strings, maybe I'll use a pad, you know, um, instead of, you know, instead of, instead of this, maybe I'll use that. So that is how you, you really, um, get a grasp on what sounds that you're going to pick and what sounds go good together. Now, if you're, if you have like this, this, um, this weird idea that somehow analyzing music and getting the math behind the genre is not creative, then keep on trying to fucking, you know, be super creative and create your own type of music that doesn't exist and never will because it's not how it works, you know? That's, I think that's a problem with um, a lot of people who are trying to teach themselves how to be self-taught in beat making is they they think that they think that everything comes from uh hip-hop jesus and creative buddha like like it's all just divine and it's not when um you know when you take really talented um composers and piano players for example from the past they had um a set of like rigid mathematical and physical training that enabled them to have the necessary tools to 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 understand the rules of an instrument or of music and then go ahead and break that and this is and this is the same type of this is the same type of education that i'm suggesting to you that you need in order to you know in order to get you know as 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 good as me and people who are way better than me because they all did the same thing that's why you don't that's that's why producers are nerds you know because you have to go you have to go and search out the knowledge um i still do it to this day um one of one of the things that i do to um you know to to figure out sounds and, and see how genres are moving and things like that um when i hear something and i don't particularly understand it is i'll go in i'll go and find like um i'll google like i'll hear a song and then I'll be like, all right, I'll put into Google, um, you know, baseline from from uh, from new song X, and then <clears throat> I'll, I'll I'll read all those links, the Gear Sluts links, all the random forum links, and then uh, usually I'll wind up in some forum in Reddit, and it'll be like it, it'll be like a whole bunch of audio nerds talking about like, oh, I was able to recreate it like this, I was able to recreate it like that, and you'll go down and you'll get to that golden page, and it'll be like, ah it's the it's you know it's the moog boxy bass from the you know from the moog expansion and omnisphere then you go pull that preset up out of a you know out of a synth that has 25 25,000 presets you pull it up and you're like oh my god this is the actual bass used so then you're like boom i'm not actually going to use the preset they used because because i don't want to um you know i don't i don't want to recreate their song i don't want to remake the beat but let me look at let me look at the waveforms you know let me look at the filter that they use let me look at you know let me look at the effects that they put on how much detune that they put on and then let me go ahead and design my own patch that's kind of in that lane so i'm within the genre but it's mine you see what i'm saying so <clears throat> if you want to get good at sound design here is what I or not sound design. If you want to get good at sound selection, here's what I suggest: work within genres. Right? If if your goal is to create a new genre, but you can't produce within an existing genre, you're not going to reach that place. You need to you need to be able to to master what's out now before before you can change it. Right? That's just that's just the honest truth. Otherwise, you're going to waste years of your life. So take a genre that exists now you know something something that you feel that something that you feel that you can understand and take take the three most popular songs like the three biggest songs don't take the most abstract ones or you know the most quote-unquote creative take the three biggest songs and then take yourself take yourself a piece of paper or a word document and write down all the sounds in the song you know what i mean and write down when they occur write down what's what's happening during the hook write down what's happening during the intro write down what's happening during the verses so if the song has you know if the song has a chip tune arp you know what i mean and a um and and, and an 808 bass line and the young chop snare and a pitched hi-hat and an open hi-hat you know and and um and a rolled off kick and or or, or a vocal sample or whatever 
now we'll sit with those three songs next to each other and circle all the things they have in common okay then take a new piece of paper and write those things down on a piece of paper once you once you have those written down that sound selection you have you have now figured out how to select sounds within that given genre and then and then once you've done that now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden you put that into practice. Okay, now you go ahead and you make your 10, 20 beats with that sound selection. All of a sudden, you're going to have ideas that come to you on how you could take this this sound selection and morph it to your own tastes. And then all this and and then after you put that into practice and you keep working through it, then boom. You're gonna be an ace at sound selection, and it's that hard <laughs> and that simple. It's just you got to put in the work. Um, so I hope you guys, um, you know, I hope you guys aren't discouraged by this because there isn't a product that you could buy, or you know, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna send you a list of the different sounds that sound good with beats. You know, I want you guys to um, really, you know, really learn this stuff for yourself and really be proficient in it. Um, if you guys stuck around to the end, um, for all you artists out there that are that are wanting to um that are serious that are wanting to get your music out and that are wanting to um get a lot of views and plays and everything i have an offer for you um i'm looking for someone to work with on a um you know on a uh on a partnership basis and the uh the only the only um stipulation that i have well one i have to like your stuff and two um you gotta be able to do 50 songs a year like i want to put out i want to put out a song a week you know what i'm saying i'll give I'll, I'll, I'll give you two weeks vacation like like i get at my job but i want to put out a song a week if if you think that um you could do a song a week all year and we could put up 50 songs on soundcloud um, hit me up on this talk. It's craftmaster954 at gmail.com. Keep it simple. Don't be basic. And we'll see you on the next one.